Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about the best scenario to use Kubernetes. So let's get into it. So the question in question here is basically that, well, when do you use Kubernetes? And when don't you use Kubernetes, I suppose? And this is a pretty good question uh, because it touches on an, a misconception that quite a lot of people have. And this is usually the thing that I, uh, these are one of those things that this is one of those things that I use to determine the seniority level between people, like how well they actually know software engineering and if they're on just, you know, they're just basically regurgitating what's popular on the internet or if they actually know what the hell they're talking about. Because quite a lot of people uh, I've talked to have just immediately asked me about Docker and then they asked me about Kubernetes like okay all right cool I learned I learned Docker now and I know now I know microservices quote unquote they know microservices and now when you want to need you want to learn Kubernetes and I know that the reason why they ask things in that order is because that is exactly how every single beginner start or every junior level profile starts out these days we're learning about software architecture because if soon as you try to find anything about software architecture today you're just going to find the things that are very popular and this big thing that people seem to not really understand right now or just ever it seems is that the thing that is on the internet the thing that they search for that google shows them is for the most part just the things that are really popular but they don't start step take a step back and really ask the fundamental question, what use case does this have? What is the problem that I'm solving and what is the tool solving? And what problem is the tool solving? Because you can think of it as, I mean, if you're gonna Google for cool cars or cars or something like that, you're not gonna find some, oh, again, the first thing that's gonna show, be shown to you is not the thing that most of the world is, you know, you know, the most common car in the world is going to be something a little bit more extravagant than what most people use because there's, I mean, it's the, the Google and the internet and like all of these things are kind of in place to keep you interested, to give you something that is, I'm not saying sensational, but it's, uh, they are aimed towards giving you content that is very popular and the boring obvious thing is usually not the popular thing it's the thing that is a little bit more extravagant so with that said i will tell you when to use kubernetes and when not to use kubernetes if you are starting out your first own like personal project and then let's just say that you're starting you're you're writing your first hundred or thousands a thousand lines of code right now there is no reason for you unless you have a service-oriented architecture. In other words, you have multiple services that need to connect to each other and you're all running them yourself, then there's no reason for you to use Kubernetes because Kubernetes, the entire idea behind this is to manage orchestration. And orchestration, what that entails is that you actually need to have a deployment. Uh, in other words, you need to deploy more than one service because otherwise you're just basically, well, you could, of course, just re deploy a monolith with Kubernetes as well. And if you're running things on Amazon or Google Cloud or Azure or something, and you already know Kubernetes really, really well, then of course, that might be the most efficient way for you to do it. But there are quite a lot of hosts out there, smaller hosts, like say Heroku, as an example, where all you really need to do is to declare a Docker file and push that. And in PHP land, it's very common that some hosts just use FTP. So you can just send your files directly. And that's a lot faster than going through the hassle of setting up a Google Cloud account or an Amazon account and using and going and really getting to know Kubernetes in order to just deploy a single monolithic application. However, you should know that once you get up to a certain size of project, let's say that you're, you're measuring your code in either tens of thousands of lines of code, or at the very least that you have several services, you have different um, parts of your system, you have a distributed system that where each of these services needs to talk to each other. You might have a service to handle payments, one service to handle the products, one to handle orders, one to handle users. You may have this distributed system. Then Kubernetes starts to make sense for you. 
because now you need to actually express that these sh these services should work together. They should be able to communicate together, and then you need to deploy them in a certain fashion to like you might need to make several deployments if you don't use Kubernetes. And that is the beautiful part about it that it allows you to actually manage quite large systems with a lot of different services and you can express you know how many versions of a of an application you want running and you know how they should communicate and all this stuff but you should know kubernetes is a massive massive tool so this is the sort of pay like, i mean i know that it's cool i know that for quite a lot of people that's just i mean if you're just learning it because it's interesting like go for it i use it every day at work because i have to because i don't like i mean I enjoy it, it would be an absolute horror show for me to do my job without it, but it's not, it's not by choice, if that makes sense. If I could have a simpler application that just allowed me to basically run a really small little shell command and then it just pushed away my code and then I was done with it, that would be perfect. But I don't. I have a system that is large. I work on a system that is large enough where it actually warrants using something like Kubernetes. So what I want you to take away from this is that when you use Kubernetes, it is usually because you have a fairly large system with many different services that needs to talk to each other that have different responsibilities, but they need to work together in order for your system to work as a whole. If you have less than a thousand lines of code or you're starting your first own little project where there's just one single service, there's no real need for you to use Kubernetes. You can, because it's designed, I mean, you can use it for one service, you can use it for a thousand services, that doesn't really matter. But it's a little bit of overkill as a beginner to think that you need to learn Kubernetes just to get a product, like a web page up on the web. There are many easy, like there's a lot easier ways to do this. You don't have to go and learn Kubernetes just to get something up on the internet. That's absolutely false. So yeah, that, just keep that with you. Kubernetes is absolutely amazing for its intended use case, but a lot of people go uh, hype it and don't really understand its use case and start assume that they need to learn it just because everybody's talking about it, and that's not true. Have a great day.